Hello. If you're like me, you're frustrated with the limited out of the box SharePoint calendar. It can't do a whole lot. It's fine for very simple situations with just a few events, but not great when it comes to having a shared office calendar and when you want to have the ability to do configuration to change the way it looks and have additional functionality. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up an advanced calendar that does have lots of configuration options and where you can control how the calendar looks and add the features that you want. So now let's get SharePoint smart. All right, here I am in SharePoint Online. So let's just start by talking a little bit about this out of the box SharePoint calendar. So what's the big deal? This is the only option we have in SharePoint in modern list views. When we're in a SharePoint list, we have the option to add a view and one of those options is calendar. That's it. That's what we have in order to set up calendars in SharePoint. When you do that, it will show you some different options in terms of how you see your calendar data. By far, the most popular way to look at calendars is with the month view. And you can see I've got my current month showing and I've got a few events populated. On the side, it can show a list of events for a particular day. What's missing? I don't have the option to really control how this calendar looks, and there are a lot of limitations. One big limitation is I only can see up to three events showing up in this box at one time. We all know that it's very common with the calendar that we've got to have more events. The out of the box calendar will show this information for you if you click on that day. But if I don't have that shown, it's simply going to be hidden. So I can really show no more than three events uh, without having to expand it by clicking on the individual days. In terms of the look and feel, everything's a bit packed in and I can't control anything in terms of how this calendar looks. I've simply got gray and white and that's it as far as uh, the look on these options. Another thing it does, which is aggravating, is when I have an all-day event, uh, if I want to mark a day as a holiday, for example, it always shows the time. So, for example, I've got July 4th marked as a holiday, and it shows 12 a.m. for the time. That's certainly not what we want to see on the calendar view. So, all in all, this is very limited. It's not allowing any highlighting of events with background colors. It's not giving us any dynamic options and it's certainly not allowing us to control the look and feel of the calendar. So overall, this is very disappointing. It's not a great calendar solution if I wanna feature that in the SharePoint site. So now I'm gonna show you another template which you can use and I'm gonna highlight the differences between this template and the out-of-the-box SharePoint template. This is using a template from SharePointDashboards.com. I'm going to feature the differences in how this calendar template works in comparison to out-of-the-box SharePoint. So with this template, you can do paging by simply clicking on the arrows to switch between different months, um, or you can you know, just click on the different events to see what you want to get. And then on the individual days, I can um, hover over them to see them. Now, right away, you see some distinct differences in terms of the look and feel. The current day is highlighted in blue. The weekends are highlighted with a green background color to make them look distinctly different from weekdays. Past events are shown in a light gray color. The day boxes are larger. 
The number of events that can show on an individual days now is eight, substantially different than the very small limitation of three events with the out of the box calendar. When I click into the event, I'm going to be able to get details and I can do things like set the overall background color for that day and then put in individual settings uh, for these events. So here we go for my holiday. I simply go down to event one and I can do things like select an icon, um, whatever I want, and then it's going to update real time. Notice I also have the option to pick for all day event. Additionally, I can do things like set the location for the event. I can indicate if there's a contact person who I can contact for questions about the event. And then I can even do a highlight color for that event. So right now that one's set to ghost white. Um, I can set it to any color I want. So I could pick a different background color. In real time, I can see a preview at the top, which shows me a manifest of all the information for this event. So I now have rich dynamic options to control what's displayed for individual events and for that day. So this calendar is going to be able to accommodate for lots more events going on. And I'm going to be able to flag those events with eye catching icons, or I can use background colors for the day. Though that's not the only differences in terms of how this can be configured. I can have a link for the event. If I want to have a URL where I can click on the event to get more information, uh, I can add that. And then I can also adjust the size of the font and the font face that's displayed in this site, um, as well as multiple other look and feel options when I'm configuring the template. So this calendar looks much different than the out of the box calendar and it allows you to do quite a bit more. In order to use this, I need to get the template from the SharePoint dashboards.com site. The template is referred to as the calendar plus template and it's part of the subscription in this site. So I've already got this called up and I'm going to review the steps on how you can get this calendar loaded into your own SharePoint site. The first thing you want to do is review the instructions which are shown in the lower left corner and it tells you some key things that you need to do. This does require a SharePoint list template and you can retrieve that by clicking on the link and you can then download the STP SharePoint list template file. That's the first thing you need to do. Then you can go to your SharePoint tenant and load that. In my SharePoint site, I'm going to go to the site settings, which is under site information. And then I'm going to do view all site settings. And I want to go to the list templates option. If you don't see this, this can easily be turned on by your SharePoint administrator by enabling custom scripting on the site that will unlock this option. There are instructions linked in the notes on this template. In the list template screen, I can upload the file, which I just got from the SharePoint dashboard site. So I click files, upload document, and then I can select that STP file to upload as a list template. I can go with my default settings, hit save, and then now, when I'm at the site content screen, I can go to the classic mode. And when I go to click add an app, I'm going to find that option accessible to me. I can find that by paging through these choices and I'm going to see it uh, towards the end of those options. There it is, the SPDB custom calendar list template. Um, so what I would do is click on that it's going to ask me what I want to call my list name and I can just fill in that information and that will create a new SharePoint list, which I've already done. And this is in my list called new calendar. Now at this stage, I can do some configuration and we're going to show how that works. 
So on my SharePoint dashboards page, I'm logged in under my pro subscription account and it says that it does need the list name. That's part of the URL. It explains in the instructions. It's the part that's highlighted in yellow. Um, so I need to get that information from my SharePoint site. It's the part in here right after lists. And what I want is the part that says new calendar. That's the name of the SharePoint list in the URL. So I simply paste that in like so, and I can go with my default option for applying the template. So let me copy the template. I click copy, follow the directions in the box, and then I can come back over into SharePoint and I'll apply this template over my view. So I go to format current view and simply select all, paste and save. And I do need to make sure I do that in all of my views. So the key views are two, which are called filter and current. And I can just apply the same code on both. So format current view, select all, paste and save. Now current's going to show the current month automatically every time that adjusts dynamically. And then when I click on the arrows, it's going to go to the next month. Let me refresh my page. Whoops. I just need to adjust that um, and it will click to the next calendar month. So now you might want to adjust the look and feel of that. So if I want to adjust that to have a different font size or font family, I can do that as well. Okay, so I can take that information. Maybe I want to change the look of this slightly. Um, here we've got blue borders. Maybe I want to do a uh, courier for the font family. I want to make some tweaks to it to adjust the look of that. I can do that easily um, by going to these drop down configurations and adjusting like that. And then I can um, copy the template again and just apply it over the code that I already have. So I can go to format current view and just replace the code. And you're going to see that the look and feel of this will change immediately. Maybe I want to go for a different font size. If I want it to be a little bit easier to read, I could change the font size to 14, copy the template, and then come over here and whoops, just select all paste and save. And now you can see that the writing is a little bit bigger on here. So I have total control over how this is going to look. All of that's done through the configuration screen. You see a preview on the screen. So, you know, before you apply the template, exactly how it's going to look. And there are a lot of options for that. So you can change the default text color, change the border color. Um, the current day is highlighted. You might want that to really stand out. You can adjust that background color. Uh, weekends can be made to be a different color to help, uh, help them be distinguished from the weekdays. Past date colors, that just makes the text sort of blend in more to indicate when you're past that date. You don't have to use that. You could just use regular black text if you want those to look the same. All of this can, is configurable by just using these drop down pickers uh, and everything on here. Uh, you could turn off the today background color if you don't want to use that. Uh, same thing with weekend background color and so on. All of those things are configurable options at the SharePoint dashboard site. This template is one of more than 200 different templates available at the site. You can browse the options by just looking at the gallery here and it is free to sign up for 21 templates. And then if you like that, you can go on to take advantage of this template as well as other calendar related templates. If you go onto the gallery page and search for calendar, you're going to see that there are several different calendar options available. This one is known as calendar plus. 
Okay, so those were the options and configuration that you can do in SharePoint dashboards to use the Calendar Plus uh, template, which allows you all kinds of different things that you can do on a calendar page in SharePoint. So if you're stuck and using the out-of-the-box calendar on SharePoint and you're frustrated, you want more options and you want to have a robust calendar that can be shared in your organization that can accommodate a lot of events and use different highlighting and color, color configuration as well as icons and all the options that we showed. This is going to be something you can set up very quickly and use in your own organization. I hope you found that useful. Good luck.